Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kapil and I'm a part of marketing team here at EDB. I will be your host today for this session on Postgres backup and recovery best practices. I'm joined today by Mansoor Sheikh, senior sales engineer at Enterprise DB. Now, briefly before I turn it over, I just want to go through a few housekeeping items. This presentation is being recorded. We will share the recording along with the slides after the session. All the lines are currently muted. If you have a question, please feel free to submit it in the Q&A panel. We will address the questions towards the end of the session. If we do not have enough time to answer all the questions, we'll follow up later with any attendees whose questions were not answered. And now without further ado, let's start with the session. Over to you, Mansur. Yeah, thank you, Kapil. Thank you, everyone. So today's uh, webinar, the agenda is backup types. We'll discuss database SQL dumps, that is in logical backups and how you can restore the dumps. Then we'll see offline backup, which is the regular activity while performing database ad administration activity on PostgreSQL. Then continuous archiving, uh, how you can take the backup in archive mode. Online physical backups, PG based backup, We'll see how we can restore your Postgres if any crash happens, how we can it can be restored to a particular point in time or a particular transaction. Also, we'll discuss some of the EDB tools, the comparison of EDB tools and how that can be configured. That is That will be the discussion. So why do we need backups? You know that a backup is a very important factor while uh, performing the database administration activity. And the backup is in a consistent copy of a data that can be used to record the database. Because if something has happened wrong, something goes down or something crash happened, that you have to need to bring up the data. You have to need to bring up your database. In that scenario, you have to restore the database. That's why the regular backup policy should be uh, properly configured at your environment. And database need to be backup to avoid the data loss, yes. The companies has the policy that there should not be any downtime or sometimes there should, should not be any data loss. Uh, if any crash happens, you have to restore database. And when you restore the database, the database should be up to the mark. So there are different errors that uh, user error, the data loss can happen due to the er user errors that some of the user has dropped any table and you're and he's struggling uh, to restore that particular table. If there is a hardware failure, that is a disk corruptions are there. Any uh, hardware failure happens, then the data loss uh, is the possibility and the data data, data corruption is uh, the factor where the uh, data loss happens and to avoid such uh, catastrophic losses that uh, you have to take the backup um, particularly you need uh, the ability to restore the old, old data due to the compliances reason sometimes you have the company you have the company policies compliances are there and you have to restore the old data in that in that scenarios you have taken the backup properly so that you can restore your old data of one month back or six month back uh, if you have properly backed up the database. Database needs to quickly restore to meet your RP and RTOs. You have some recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives that's in uh, how much time you have to record the data and how much data loss you can tolerate. So that is a requirement in that scenario as well, the database needs to be backed up. And to protect company's business reputation, yes, if you are running an environment and if your data, if you have lost the data, that can impact your companies or the business reputations. So that's why you need to take the backups. There are different backups. I'm not going uh, that's the backups. So in details, but first of all, we'll see what are the categories of uh, different types of backups in the Postgres SQL. As with any databases, Postgres database should support the backups. And it is divided into two categories, that is logical backups and physical backups. For my logical backups, mean my database is up and running, and I want to take the backup of my objects, that is my tables, my schemas, my SQLs. In that case, the logical backup is useful. Also, the logical backup is useful for the migration, data migration purposes or the upgradation. Uh, in that case, the logical backups help for you. So it is divided into two parts, that is a database SQL dumps and database cluster. You know in Postgres SQL, if I say the cluster, that is nothing but instance. So in that instance, there are multiple databases are there. 
I can take the dump for an individual database. That means a database level backup if I want to take that I can do with the help of pg underscore dump. I have another utility that I want to take entire clusters backup, entire instance where all the databases are there. And in, in, in such situation, if some sort of some a global object has lost, in that scenario, I can restore my database with the help of uh, the cluster, uh, the backup which I have taken of my full cluster. And that utility is a PG dump all. Then we have physical backups. Physical backups is nothing but the file level backup. Uh, in databases, we know that the files are stored on a disk. So for my PostgreSQL, one of the ma major part is your files. That is the data files are there, table spaces are there. And uh, all these files, all these stuffs are available in the data directory. So when I take the physical backup, that is my data directory, then it can be taken in two ways. When I have to shut down the database that is in a cold backup, that is in a consistent backup. And as per the organization policies, you may take the cold backup in some situations. For that, the offline system level backup is useful. Another method is that your database is up and running and application is up and running. You want to take the backup that is an online backup, that is a hot backup. So there are two ways that is a low level API that is in a traditional technique. And the another is in a PG based backup. By using PG based backup, you can take uh, the file level backup. You can take the online uh, backup of your databases. So logical backups. So when I say the database is skill dumps, by using PG dump, I can take the logical backup and it provides utility program that is in a PG underscore dump. Dumps created PG underscore dumps are internally consistent. That means, say, when you have started your PG dump, Till that time, you will get the consistent. That means it represents the snapshot of our database as of time the PG dump has started. When the PG dump has started, till that time, you can restore the data. When uh, if something goes wrong and you are restoring the database, uh, uh, the backup which is taken by PG underscore dump, so that you can do. So that is a snapshot of the database as of time PG underscore DB dump running. The syntax and the options are like this. See, by using PG dump, uh, you can take the data only. That is, there are different options are there. Uh, for example, I want to take the PG dump. I want to take the dump of my database. I don't want the data definitions, so I have the option hyphen A. I want schemas only, not a dump. So I have hyphen S option is there. If I want to specified schema, I want to take uh, the specified schemas backup. In that case, hyphen N option is there. If I want to specify, there are 100 schemas are there. I want to take the backup of three or four schemas. Just specify hyphen N multiple times with the schema name, you will get the schema. Even I can exclude the schema by using hyphen capital N. I can take the table uh, backups. And while taking the backup, I can give the name of my file, that is name of my script, which is given by half and F. So there are different ways of backup. That is, I can take the plain text SQL script. So entire SQL will be uh, part of that script. That is hyphen capital FP. I can take the tar format. I have the utility that is in a compressed backup. I can take with the help of hyphen capital FC. The directory backup, the directory backup is useful. Let's say that uh, you have uh, database size, volume of database size is high. In that scenario, you want to run your PG drum parallelly. So I'll take uh, the directory format and I can assign the number of jobs. So dumps in parallel by dumping n jobs tables. This is only supported with the directory format. If you want to show what's going on, then you can use hyphen V for her verbose option. So for the large databases, if there isn't a large database and if operating system has a maximum file size limit, in that case, you can use the compression program for taking the zip. So pg underscore dump uh, db name, uh, then you can redirect to zzip and give the file name that will provide you the... And the tar format is also, or you can uh, zip uh, uh, when you pass to some of the medium. And also split commands allows you, uh, say for example, uh, you have the database and you want in particular chunks, so that split command will allow you 
to divide into that. But while restoring that uh, the backup which you have taken by using a tar and split, that first you have to untar and you have to merge uh, before restore. So now this is a restore options. The, the backup which I have taken by using SQL dump that I can restore by using uh, the PSQL uh, utility as well as the PG restore utility. PSQL will help you if you have taken the backup of the plain text format while restoring, uh, it will help you by using PSQL client. And if you have taken the client, uh, the cluster level backup by using PG underscore dump all in that scenario is while restoring your cluster, uh, the backup which you have taken using PG underscore dump all. For that, again, PSQL uh, utility is useful that I'll show you. Then other uh, the format like a compressed backup tar formats or FD formats, which you have taken while restoring your backup uh, of these formats, then we have the PG underscore restore utility that will help you to restore your backups, which is taken by uh, hyphen capital FT, hyphen FD, hyphen FC uh, formats. So these are the PG restore options are available that uh, backup file format you have to specify hyphen capital D that connect to the specified database and also restore to this database. That means uh, you have to specify the database while restoring so that it will connect one of the database and it will do the restore format. And if you have not the, uh, and the database is not there, then you have to specify hyphen C that will create the database a name in the dump file and restore directly into it. Then we have hyphen A hyphen S options that restore the data only the data definitions. Then I have hyphen N the schema that restores the objects uh, from your specified schema. And uh, if you do not want to restore the object, uh, the particular schema, then you can specify hyphen N the same way hyphen T and hyphen V. Then PG dump all is used to dump the entire database. Entire cluster backup, that is uh, to take that backup, we have PG underscore dump all utilities and there are different options are there. You can take the backup by using PG underscore dump all for your entire cluster. If your entire cluster goes down, that you have to create a simply default cluster, empty cluster, restore your uh, the backup by using PG underscore dump all. And for that, uh, the PSK utility is useful. Then PG underscore dump all uh, while taking the backup for entire cluster. Again, there are different options are there that I can do uh, the data only. I don't want the schemas. Then I have an option hyphen A. If I want to take the definitions, data definitions, uh, not a data uh, in that scenario is hyphen capital S is there. Hyphen G dump global objects only, not a database. And in some scenarios, if you have the development environment is there and you are moving to the production, and in that scenario, you want only the data definition, not a data. You want only the roles or you want to skip the roles. In that scenario, we have hyphen G hyphen R option is there. Then, uh, as I said, uh, you can use hyphen C clean the database before recreating. Skip restoration of object ownership. Again, uh, I have a development. I want to move to the production and whatever the ownership for my objects, I don't want to enter in my production and that I can skip with the help of uh, hyphen capital O option. Then similar way hyphen X uh, do not dump privileges, grant and revoke while uh, moving your uh, objects from one uh, scheme, one uh, server to another server, or I can say that while um, taking the PG dump all. Physical, so these are the logical backups. So there are two ways of logical backup. That is a cluster backup and the database level backup for database PG underscore dump and for cluster PG dump all. And to restore the logical backup, we have PG underscore restore utility and the PSSQL utility is there. Now the backups of the file level backup. This is very important backup that I want my consistent backup. I want that till my particular point, I want to restore my database. That means, for example, I have taken backup yesterday, last night, and today I have started last night, and today I have started my work. But suddenly there is a crash happen, something goes wrong, uh, that hardware failure happen, and I have already taken the backup last night. 
So I have the ability that I can archive my files. That is a wall files are here. Here is a concept that is right ahead log files are there. That is a transaction log files are there because post this works on asset compliance. It has the capability to do uh, the wall files if any transaction happens. And this, this wall files will be archived to the archive destination if your database is in archive mode. So what I will do that, I will restore my physical backup uh, which is taken uh, online. And after that, I can replay my wall files. By using my wall files, I can restore data to a particular point in time. So for that purpose, there is a file level backup is uh, necessary. That is nothing but physical backup. And you can use whatever method you can prefer to do the file level backups. There are two ways of file level backups that I want to shut down my database that is in a cold backup, which is known as an offline backup. While doing an offline backup, what I will do that I will I will shut down my database. I will I will take the backup of my data directly uh, by using normal Linux command that is in a CP command. Uh, I can take the backup of my data directly while taking the offline backup. Now, what is an online backup? Uh, my database is up and running. Users or application has already connected to my database. So we have the facility that is an online backup. If there is a 24 by 7 environment is there and I want to take the online backup while my database uh, uh, is up and running. That is nothing but online backup. By using online backup, what you can do that while the restoration, you have to restore the backup which is taken uh, uh, online backup. And after that, you can um, apply your wall files uh, for the particular restorations. So coming to the point that offline backups and online backups. So offline backups are taken using normal operating system commands. For that, what you have to do that database sh should be shut down. Normally, uh, it's not a regular practice in uh, organizations. If the policy has that after two or three months or quarterly, uh, there is a policy to shut down the database, take the offline backups. In that case, you can take the complete backup of your database. Uh, then online backups, uh, online backups are again categorized into low level APIs and PG based backup. But before taking the online backups, your database should be in continuous archiving mode. And for continuous archiving mode, what are the parameters you have to set for your PostgreSQL uh, that I'll show you. And uh, Again, for continuous archiving, your archive mode should be on. You should have a separate archive destination. I'll show you that uh, what are the best practices for the backups uh, in my coming slides. And I'll also discuss uh, some sort of uh, you know, BG dump and the point in time recovery. So low level APIs is a traditional method. What it happens that in low level API, you have to bring your database in begin backup mode, copy your wall files and the end backup. The PG based backup is in a latest method that nowadays we use that is in a PG based backup. For PG based backup, again, uh, there is no need to bring your database in begin and end backup mode, it will automatically uh, go into that. So, for continuous archiving, that is in a prerequisite for your PG based backup, that if I want to take the PG based backup, then first of all, you have to uh, keep your database in a continuous archiving because. Uh, what happens in PostgreSQL whenever the transaction happens, the transaction will go from wall buffer to the wall files and wall files are available in wall area. Each wall files of 16 MB and uh, if it's uh, 16 MB full, then it will create another wall files, then third wall files in this way uh, and that will uh, accumulate in the wall area. And once wall area is full, then it recycles and in that case there, there is an overwriting takes place. Your old wall files may get rewritten. For that purpose, you have to archive the wall files in separate destination because some, sometimes if you want to restore your old data, in that scenario, your wall file should be archived. And Postgres automatically maintains wall logs, which are uh, if it is switched off. So if any uh, log switch happen, then these wall files will be uh, move to the wall area and after to the archive destination as well. So continuous archiving can be set up by three parameters. That is wall underscore level, which is a replica. Archive mode should be on and archive commands, which you have to specify, uh, uh, which uh, archive commands, what it will do that 
by using it will set the archiver process once the archive process will set then it will copy your wall files from your existing default wall area uh, to the archive extension that means see wall level is a replica archive mode is equal to on and the archive commands is equal to cp uh, hyphen i hyphen percent p means default wall files which is in existing wall uh, files which is in default location or existing location that will uh, move to the pgsql archive destination and percent f is in a format for your archive files after making the changes in postgresql conf to make your database in archive log mode then restart the database and automatically archive files are generated after every log switch and that will go to the archive destination we have another method of keeping your uh, database in archive log mode by using streaming wall and for streaming wall uh, it has a wall level should be replica archive mode should be on and this is what happened that uh, these three parameters you have to set and restart the cluster and then pg underscore receive wall uh, that is a method by using that uh, you can move your wall files to the archive and this, this is a streaming process that is a streaming wall process so we'll go with the archiver process here so pg based backup tool uh, can take online based backup of your database cluster this backup can be used for pitr or streaming replication and it makes the binary copy of your database and for pg based backup what you have to do that wall level should be replica you have to specify uh, the entries in the pghb.con file and then archive mode should be on and the max wall senders because it is sending the wall files so this parameter is useful as well as wall keep size so that if high running transactions are there so your wall should should not be immediately overwritten so that's why there is a two parameters you have to set and you can take the pg based backup so for pg based backup again your location of uh, you have to specify hyphen d the location of your data directory then hyphen f file format plain or tar formats you can specify again uh, if the table spaces are there in old directory you want to move into the new directory that you have to specify half and the old dr and new dr because uh, you are moving entire data directory and tables your table spaces are distributed in different directories so this option can be useful and there are other options hyphen z hyphen ap uh, for compression level and the progress level at the bottom side this way you can take the backup that is pg underscore base backup have an h local host and you can specify the data directory so that it will take the backup uh, then point in time uh, recovery will discuss uh, at the uh, later stage um, let me show you some of the how to take the backup what i have done that i have created my virtual machines in my virtual machine i have installed postgresql 13 and i have also created uh, my uh, the backup directory is there you can create the backup directory at somewhere location so see this i have taken the offline backup as well as for my security purpose so i have created so just let me see that is pwd uh, this is my working directory where my backup folder is there in wirelab uh, pgsql backups so already i have created now what i am doing that i'll go into a backup folder so already i'm there so now I am taking the backup of my uh, entire, you know, the particular database. So for that, before that, just let me show that adb store and adb user. This is my data and there are different tables are there. So these are the different tables and my data is there. So I'm going to my, I'm taking the backup for that. I will take pg underscore dump and I have to specify my port that is 5432 uh, for my database then again you have to specify your super user postgres and then i am creating my file and the file might be uh, that is you can create any file name so i am giving adb store bkp.sql this is the file which i have given and I am taking the backup of my database. So PG dump all utility is used to take the backup of your database. So I have taken the backup and, and this is my adb store dot backup. I can open this uh, because it is a plain text format. You will see that 
all the text are already copied here that is all your sql dump is there in the file that is uh, the simple uh, method that you can take the backup then as i said that you have different formats of taking the backup by using the tar formats are there or uh, we have compressed formats are there now let's see that how we can take the backup by using the tar formats so simple again uh, what i will do that uh, this is my pg dump and then you also specify hyphen ft that is my tar format specify for your port and just give the name uh, or change the scale for file name that i am giving here that is tar and edb store so what it will do that it will take the tar format of my edb store database because i am using pg dump utility and uh, it will take the tar format just i can check that my tar format is created now then uh, similarly i can take the compress backup and for compress backup what i will do that same way uh, i can specify i can see and you can give the name any name you can give any location you can provide uh, of my database of edb store so i have taken this is a compressed format of my database I, I have taken. Then we have another method that is a directive format. This is a directive format is a useful method. And what it will do that it will help you uh, to take uh, the backup in a parallel. That means if the database size is high, in that scenarios, you can take the uh, directive backup. So let's take uh, the directive backup. So what I will do again, pg underscore dump hyphen f i can provide the directive format capital fd i already specify my port uh, my super user with the file name here you have it will create a directive so edb store edb store bkp uh, then edb store is uh, my database name and it has taken the backup by when when it will take the backup by using directive format it will create the directory and here is my directory go to that and it has uh, taken you know uh, the directory format multiple uh, zz files uh, it has created uh, that is a directory format uh, that uh, you can do now how I, I can restore the databases so there are different ways to restore the databases so now uh, just I'll, I'll see one of the method that how I can restore my data the similar way you can you restore the options which I have shown you. So now let's uh, come to the point and that uh, I'm, I'm just dropping my database. So I'll just drop DB because I have the backup now. So I am I'm dropping my one of the database to uh, see the scenario if my database is dropped so drop db and my database is dropped now let's connect to the database see adb store and adb user so now i don't have database now because it is already dropped but i want to restore it uh, before restoring uh, to the database how i can restore that is in a plain text format and just you have to uh, run the script that is a psql hyphen p my database is my database is already created just uh, uh, i am i am restoring my database and for that purpose i have i have, I have already seen that the database is not uh, available now i have to specify my um, let me just uh, check it what is the directory yeah it is uh, already there so just come back and my adb adb store bkp.sql that is in a script uh, which i have taken by normal pg underscore dump all plain text format what i will do that i will psql hyphen f i'll specify my adb store dot sql file name and then adb store
adb backup dot sql and then hyphen d adb store uh, and then hyphen u postgres so it's showing that database is not exist so first of all you have to create the database so i am creating the database creating database adb store and owner adb user so i created the database that you have to create that is an empty database then go and run the script so it has uh, restored my database now go to your adb store and adb user so if you see that uh, it has uh, i i brought my database uh, back so what that is a psql utility is there similar way you can use uh, the tar format if you have created a tar format and if you want to restore it uh, the same way you have to do so the option if i i can tell you that uh, let's see here again drop db um, then store i have dropped my databases uh, then if i connect to my db store so database is not there because i can't connect now i have to restore that database and as we know that that uh, we have to first create the database because database you have to create but if you don't want to create the database that you have another option that is a capital c hyphen c option is there so that automatically create your database but here you have to create the database so what i am doing that is a create database i am creating the database adb store and adb user owner uh, sorry create database adb user owner create database adb store owner is adb user so i have created the database here after creating the database i want to restore by using a tar format my tar format is there so same way pg underscore restore hyphen ft that is my type for tar format hyphen d adb store hyphen u provide the postgres and my tar format uh, is here adb store bkp dot tar so it will restore my database just connect to that see adb store adb user my database is there i have connected just check the table sorry yeah i i got my database that is i have restored by using uh, pg tar mechanism now let's uh, uh, let's come to the uh, archive mode that uh, as i said that archive is archive is very important and for that you can uh, keep your databases in archive log mode so pg restore option is there for pg restore uh, you can uh, restore the database as well as pg dump all uh, that pg dump all what it will do that pg dump all mechanism is used to uh, restore the database by using uh, pg dump all utility that means that pg underscore dump all is used to take the backup of your entire cluster not particular database and how you can I'll take that one that is pg underscore dump all i'm taking the backup let me just check my present working directory pg underscore dump all i am taking the backup of my cluster i have multiple clusters are there then you have to provide the port and then i am providing my super user that is post place and i am taking my cluster backup so for that cluster backup you just specify where you want to take your backup so this is my entire full cluster backup i want to take in my backup directory see this is entire cluster backup not a table level if cluster goes wrong down if any crash happen what you have to do void what you have to do create a new cluster empty cluster just to restore it and if this this is a pg underscore dump all utility 
then just PSQL specify the file name that is your script and it will restore entire cluster. So I am taking here full underscore, let's see, do dumb, full dumb backup of my 5432, that is dot SQL. So it has taken the backup. Go to see, this is the PG uh, dump uh, backup is utility is there. By using that, uh, you have taken the backup of your entire cluster. So this way, uh, again, you, you have the utility that is PSQL. You can restore your backup uh, by using this uh, mechanism. So these are the things uh, which we have discussed that logical backup and physical backup for physical backup. That is a normal copy command uh, is useful to take the physical backup. And for hot backup that you should have some parameters that should be configured and your database should be in uh, archive mode. So that's for that purpose. Let me just go to my data directory, my data directory, that is my cluster directory, where lib pgsql, it is there in my data. This is my data directory. These are my, uh, the stuff that is my data directive. This is the files are there, data files are available, tables, this is are there. So while taking the physical backup, you have to take the backup of this data directive. There are other tools that EDB offers, that is a barman tool, uh, and we have the PG backrest. Uh, I'll just show you that and how you can configure easily. Uh, we have the documentation, we have the demos are there uh, that you can take the help of. The purpose uh, of this webinar that you should be aware with the basic uh, basics of uh, the backup and then uh, then we have we can show i have some questions i have received uh, yeah definitely i will discuss uh, at the last 10 minutes so i was uh, showing about that what configuration you have to configure uh, while taking the archive backup or pg based backup the pg based backup the prerequisite is your database is in archive mode so let me open the conf file and see a uh, wall level this is the parameter which i have shown that should be uh, wall level should be in replica uh, that will take your wall replica copy then we have another that is the archive mode that should be on so that your archiver process will be enabled so archive mode is on so uh, by default is off uh, i have already enabled uh, there's an off on or always so you just have to uh, make it on and then uh, we have archive command is there so what you have to do that archive underscore command so here archive underscore command this is very important what i have done that cp percent p that is my current wall files that will go to my archive destination that is uh, where lib pg underscore arc underscore test and the format which i have specified once you specify the format then uh, what you have to do just restart your cluster and when you restart your cluster uh, your database in the uh, in the archive mode so what i have done already i have my database is in archive log mode so you can see that archive underscore mode so it will show you that archive mode is on you can also see that what is my archive command so score command so it will show you uh, the archive command as well so now my database is in archive log mode uh, you can see the archive log mode is on uh, my archive destination is there uh, in this archive destination my log files will be before that uh, taking the backup uh, I'll show you that uh, how the archive files will create, how it will go into archive destinations. So for that, so at one time that uh, manually uh, you can uh, switch your log files by using pg underscore switch underscore wall files. But in production environment, if high traffics are there, automatically the log switch happens and this log will move to the uh, wall destination. So I'm just pg underscore switch underscore wall. So I'm just forcing my walls. So it is created and just go into the directory uh, in the wall directory. So here are my walls are there. These are the wall files, 16 MB. Uh, that is an size by default. 
these are the wall files and if i go to my var arc dist so there is my arc dist is there in that arc dist uh, so these are the files which uh, uh, it will accumulate uh, when the log switch happens and after that uh, you are eligible to take the pg base backup but while taking the pg base backup what you have to do that see here I have told you that for the PG based backup, that wall level is equal to replica archive commands. I have set archive mode is on. Max wall center that will start the streaming process and it will uh, send your wall uh, files to the archive extension. That is a max wall center and wall keeps uh, size. That is the parameter that is required for taking the PG based backup. And for that, see, go to the data directory. So I have my data directory. you can see the files which i have already configured and then we'll take the pg base backup and then we'll move for the uh, some part so vi postgresql.conf then max wall sender max underscore wall underscore sender parameters see so this i have set that is equal to 10 and the max uh, wall keep size these two parameters which i have set here then come coming to back and then uh, you have you are, you have you have to also uh, do some changes in your um, pgs underscore sb dot con file make it md5 if you want to provide the password or make it trust without the password so that is an replication protocol it uses that you have to uh, specify in your pg underscore sb dot con file after that uh, you are free to take the uh, pg base backup so i am taking the pg base backup so for that pg underscore base backup is a utility uh, pg base backup i am taking of my local host if your uh, host is at a remote location then provide your ip address host name that is my local host i have to specify my directory where my backup will go so home sorry that is where lib the pgsql it's in backup and i am giving the base one online base one so it will take the backup if i go to my var lib pgsql backups then i will see that online base backup it has created go to the online base backup and it's in a data directory so my database is up and running i have taken the backup that is an online base backup so after that i'll, I'll show you the point in time recovery uh, or I'll discuss. Uh, so just go to the point. So PG based backup, whatever the PG based backup uh, you have created, and this PG based backup is used to do the point in time recovery. That means is ability to restore your database up to the present or to the specified point in time past. That means that I have my drop the table, and I have my uh, PG based backup, and due to some problem i have dropped or some crash has happened or my database is down so let's say that i have pg based backup of last evening then i have started my work today around 4 pm i observed that my database is lost so what i have i have my the pg based backup but apart from that i have my archive files i have my wall files which are uh, stored in pg underscore wall area it is also in archive destination I'll, I'll replay that uh, archive files and I'll bring my database up to the point. That is in a point in time recovery. By using point in time recovery, what it will help you? It will help you that you can recover your database till particular point. For example, the last uh, at a 10 p.m. or in the morning, um, whatever the time you uh, want, till that time you want to restore your database, that is a, you can do with the help of point in time recovery. 
So what you have to do for the point in time recovery that you have to prepare the database, stop the cluster, take file system level backup, that is a PG based backup, and then restore that you have to specify the restore command uh, into the conf uh, configuration file. I'll show you that one. And then you have to create the recovery.signal file and just start the database. What you will observe that it will create, you will bring back the database which is uh, uh, lost due to the crash uh, by using the wall file. So point in time recovery, uh, restore your database, which is taken by PG based backup and uh, apply the wall files. I'll come to that point. Before that, uh, see, uh, as you know that EDB works on PostgreSQL. Uh, and also we might uh, do another webinar on Berman uh, and PG backrest. In that, today I have discussed about the, the basics, how to take the backup. But in next webinar, we are planning that we'll discuss entire configuration, entire backups uh, by using Berman as well as a PG backrest. And if you are really interested uh, in PostgreSQL, you want to take uh, the discussion more ahead as well as uh, you are planning to post this in your deep, uh, production environment, you want to use and you want to keep in touch with, uh, that means you want to talk with our experts uh, and you have the strategy to adopt PostgreSQL, then please let us know. So accordingly, our expert will connect with you. So just you have to uh, share your uh, feedbacks here, uh, ideas that uh, are you interested to move uh, ahead with the Postgres. Kapil, can you just launch? Yes, Mansoor, I have launched the port. Yes. So can you stop now, Prasun, uh, Kapil? Yes, Mansoor, I see a few people are yet to okay. answer the poll. I'll wait for another 15 seconds. Okay, we are done, Mansoor. Yes. Thank you. So for point in time recovery, uh, what uh, the additional changes you have to do, that is restore underscore command that specify uh, in your configuration file. Uh, what it will do that uh, the same reverse way, uh, like we have done in the uh, archive mode, that it will copy the existing archive files into the current wall. Uh, when you want to do the point in time recovery and then it will apply these files. There are recovery target settings are there, other target settings that means you, are, you want to uh, restore your database to particular time, particular transaction ID or particular uh, actions. So these are some target parameters are there that you can explore while doing point in time recovery. Apart from that, so as I said that we have backup and recovery that is a barman tool and PG backrest. This Varman tool, what it will do that you can take the backup, incremental backup uh, by using our sync, that is file level backup or the PostgreSQL uh, way method is there. Uh, if I have multiple targets, are there multiple server, I can register with the Varman server and I can easily take the backup. I can take the archive compressed backup. I, I can do the restore point in time recovery. So remote server, I can have that uh, you know, mechanism. So as I discussed, definitely we would have uh, another webinar uh, for the configuration and the backup commands of Barman. The same way the PG backrest EDB supports for Barman as well as a PG backrest. So our customers, they are currently using Barman as well as a PG backrest, which will help you for full incremental and differential backups. You can keep your retention policies as per your uh, requirement, either seven days or 30 days. Uh, and you can take the backup in encryption fashion. It, it also supports for S3 uh, storage bucket, Azure, uh, and in uh, Google Cloud uh, 
platform supported. So these are the feature comparison that Barman, PG Backrest, and PG Best Backup. PG Best Backup is in a native uh, features of PostgreSQL to take the backup. But on top of it, these tools will help you uh, to, to complete your backup needs of compression or encryption fashion or parallel backups and restores. So these are the things uh, and as per your requirement, you can configure for your environment, either Burman or the PG Backrest. <clears throat> So about the strategies, so backup strategies, depending on your backup options, you should decide what is your database size and how frequently you are taking the full backup or incremental backup. Based on that, you can schedule. Uh, uh, we have the Postgres Enterprise Manager, and that is an administration tool where you can schedule, you can take the backup as well uh, graphically. And then set up wall uh, archive to keep your wall in. Uh, so that is a strategy that you have to uh, keep your set of wall files uh, separately at different location uh, so that that will help you for your point in time recoveries. Backup strategies while you uh, applying, uh, it should uh, meet your uh, requirements that is recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. Adjust your backup retention policies as per your compliances and requirement and make a thumb rule that there should be the three copies of backup, two in the local and one should be the offsite. If your local copy is corrupted or your, uh, your local copies or if your backup corrupted, at least you should have some copies at the offsite location and always encrypt your backup for the security purposes. Apart from that, what are the best practices? Make sure that your backup and recovery policy should be properly documented. Keeping a copy of backup offsite or in a cloud uh, to prevent any disaster when you lose uh, in any data center. So perform regular test of your backup. Uh, so while doing some recoveries on your test environment so that you will get that whether your backups are valid or not. So you, are, you can monitor backups process. So, so uh, configure Postgres Enterprise Manager, that's a monitoring tool, as well as uh, some other tools are there that will help you that how the backups or some alerts that your table spaces are full. You want the notification for that one. So you can take uh, that alerts as well. Uh, that is in a best practices. When you use a logical backup method, keep in mind that uh, the, uh, these are the snapshot that are not the full backup. That time when you have taken the snapshot, till that time you can restore your logical data, uh, but uh, not a particular point in time. That's why you have to go with the PG based backup or the point in time recovery. And while restoring the backup, restore it to the directory other than the source data directories. So, this is what, uh, so these are the things which I have explained. But yes, you try to the point in time recovery. We'll discuss uh, point in time recovery in uh, whenever there is an, another webinar. Uh, so I'll show you that uh, the backups which we have taken using PG based backup, how we can do the point in time recovery, as well as we'll discuss with the help of uh, your uh, the different tools uh, available uh, in EDB Postgres. So I so thank you, thank you everyone. So Kapil, I see a lot of questions are there. So we'll try yes, to some questions. questions. Uh, would you rather uh, read through the Q&A panel and answer as many questions quickly as possible in the yes. next five minutes? Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you show pointer demo? Yes, uh, PITR. The, I have given some parameters. So pointed, uh, point in point in time recovery, what just you have to take? You have to take the PG based backup. One of the parameter that is, um, which I have shown, that is restore underscore command that you, to, you have to specify. Create uh, uh, one file that is a recovery dot signal file in your data directory and start your uh, cluster. So it will do the point in time recovery. If backup is taken on slave node, can we perform PITR in a production uh, server? Yes, uh, you can perform the PITR on a production server as well. Let me say some of the questions. I'll go fast, lots of questions are there. What is the maximum of each file size when uh, we're splitting? It is a, a one MB uh, when we are splitting the max size. Uh, can we integrate backup with backup utility uh, provided by Percona? So I'm not sure, but uh, this is a native uh, backup feature is there. So either any Postgres, these uh, utilities are available. So no uh, separate because it is a Postgres native features we have discussed, not particular uh, Postgres, uh, you know, product. 
can we use network media managed backup to take directly so see uh, net backup is there but if you are telling in the media backup directly uh, it's not available till date but yes we have to see but there is no any provision to take the direct backup to the tape dry yet what is the fastest and yes safest backup in case of disaster issue so definitely it is in a pg based backup is in a fastest uh, method so backup using tar db cluster should be stopped and bring uh, up uh, after backup so the tar backup uh, it's again if it is a logical backup so you can directly restore it uh, which i have shown you can you please show the command to apply wall files or restore from online backup so uh, online backups already i have shown you i take backup using fc no owner no create db name okay based on industry practice which method is generally adopted see nowadays the pg based backup is in a standard method apart from that i would recommend you the pg backrest that is in a tool uh, as well as the barman tool is there that complete your uh, needs so just configure that one uh, that will help you uh, to complete your your requirements so i'll suggest go with the tools uh, what are the different parameters through which pg dump all functions to be allocated for backup similar target file type running parallel or bkml on gcp k so uh, not sure so while restoring whole database need to delete all db files which are under db underscore path or restore uh, the backup files restoring whole database if it is an see uh, if you are restoring your uh, yeah you have to delete uh, you have to clean your database that's a good practice so uh, there should not be any confusion of your old files and the new files can we use pg underscore dumb against big size schema uh, say 50 underscore 70 gigs in database uh, or is there any other way to that for pg dump as i uh, already showed that you can take the uh, directory format if the the size is big go with the directory format and apply the parallel jobs so that will uh, make your fastest uh, dump your way how to take backup in a binary format so that no one can actually see see the tar format compressed formats are the binary formats are there so they will not see uh, your backups bg underscore dump hyphen u bc uh, that is uh, bc uh, you, you you just specify the db name here hyphen d the db name and, and that will pass to the uh, backup sql is there any way to schedule backup in db to happen like every day yes this is the way you can set the cron job as well as in adb there is an uh, dbms or a job scheduling functionality is there that will help you to schedule the backup as well as uh, you can write the script for this uh, scheduling. What are the best practices to automate the backups? How passwords are passed in the shell? Yeah, that uh, will confirm later. What uh, when to is pg underscore restore psql? As I said, that pg underscore restore um, uh, if you are taken the backup. That is plain text format of your cluster by using pg underscore dump all and pg underscore dump utility that is a plain text format is there then you have to use psql for other uh, formats you have to use uh, pg underscore restore option is there so i think uh, remaining question yeah kapil yeah thank you mansoor i think that's all the time lots, we have for the day but lots of we questions for all the yeah we will reach out to those um, who ask those questions by email we'll answer those questions later uh, thank you mansoor yeah, thank, thank you everyone you. for joining us today um, there are a lot of questions about recording and slides so yes we will be sharing this recording and the slides with you as soon as possible thank you for joining today um, i hope you have a great rest of your day thank you thank you